When trying to contact that faraway station, we want to be as respectful and courteous as possible to those around us on the hand bends. We want to be neighborly, and we want to make sure that we follow the DX Code of Conduct. The DX Code of Conduct, this has to do not only with DXing or talking across the world, and sometimes there's quite a pile up of ham operators wanting to get through to that person from that special place that they've never reached before. We'll be covering what to do when you come upon an empty frequency, dealing with interference and much more. Hi, I'm Sebastian, KB0TTL. Let's get started. I will listen, 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 and then listen again before calling. Okay, so you're in a pile-up situation. You're trying to get through to that person. If there's already somebody keyed up and talking, the last thing you want to do is key up on top of them and drown them out. That can be difficult if you can't exactly hear them clear or if they're bleeding into the noise floor. But if you know that the person on the other end is actively speaking to somebody or you sense that there might be somebody talking on there, you don't really want to double with them. You want to listen before you key up. I will only call if I can copy the DX station properly. All right, so you're uh, listening and they're way down in the noise floor and you can't quite make a call sign out. You could tell they're a DX station. You could tell they're calling out. You could tell that they're trying to converse, but you don't have a good copy on them. You don't have an adequate copy on them. In fact, you can't even make out a call sign. It may be best to forgo that conversation, at least until the band rises. You could sit there for a few minutes. Maybe the band will come up. You can copy a call sign, and then you can address them directly. But it's usually best not to jump in unless you know to whom you are talking. That brings us on to number three. I will not trust the DX cluster and will be sure of the DX station's call sign before calling. You want to be absolutely sure of who it is you're talking to and who you're calling before you key up. Otherwise, it could be somebody else that's trying to reach that person. You've mistaken call signs, and you're now calling somebody else who's trying to reach that person. There's nothing more annoying, but I've heard it. Then there's number four. I will not interfere with the DX station, nor anyone calling, and I will never tune up on the DX frequency or in the QSX slot. So basically what this is saying, again, auto-tuner. Do not use your auto-tuner if you're on an occupied frequency, especially not a DX cluster or people trying to reach somebody across the ocean. You're really gonna block out a lot of people if you push that auto-tuner button. If the band conditions are already bad, you're just gonna make them worse for everybody. I will wait for the DX station to end the contact before I call. So how can you tell if the DXer has ended the conversation with the current person and is moving on to the next person? They're not just going to sit there and call CQ, CQ, CQ each time they end conversation with somebody, especially if there's a backup or a pile up of people trying to get to them. Instead, you'll hear 73 or QRZ, and that usually means that they are done talking to that particular person. Now, some people will say 73, some people will say QRZ, some people will say 73 and good luck and good night or give some kind of greeting. Some people do it completely differently, but listen to how they end the conversation every time because then you know they are done talking to that last person and you know that you're fine to go ahead and key in and try reaching that person. I will always use and send my full call sign. A lot of people have club memberships and they have club membership numbers and you'll hear a partial call sign and you'll hear them give their club membership number because they think they can get it out quicker or you'll hear somebody abbreviate their call sign or just give the last three letters or the prefix. Um, when you're attempting to reach a DX station or any station at all, give your full call sign. So I'm KB0TTL. So I'm not going to say, hey, I'm TTL. That wouldn't make sense. I would give my full call sign uh, when trying to make contact with the DX station. I will call and then listen for a reasonable interval. I will not call continuously. Usually when responding to a DX station, it's adequate to go ahead and say, this is KB0TTL or whatever your call sign is. If you hear nothing else, wait a few seconds. Say, this is KB0TTL, again. If the frequency is completely clear and the person doesn't respond back to you, you can assume they haven't heard you. Wait for a minute or two, maybe wait for them to take a few other callers and then try again in a few minutes as the band conditions may improve within that given amount of time. Uh, the last thing you wanna do is sit here, uh, somebody's calling CQ, jump in, this is KB0TTL, this is KB0TTL, this is KB0TTL, and thus drowning out everybody else possibly trying to get to this person or just making a nuisance of yourself. 
I will not transmit when the DX operator calls somebody else's call sign other than mine. This can be tricky, especially if that DX operator is calling perhaps a call sign that's one digit different from you, like W0TTL if you're KB0TTL, or KB0TTM, or anything that ends in the last two letters of your call sign. Uh, don't just assume that they have your call sign wrong or that they've copied you wrong. Pause, because they may actually be talking to somebody that has that call sign that's near what yours is, but not quite. If the person needs any clarification and they're trying to reach you or they've heard you, believe me, they will pause and ask you to repeat your call sign. If you're an instruction to repeat, then it's probably you, but don't just keep on going. I will not transmit when a DX operator calls a call sign that's completely unlike mine. Uh, that goes without saying. If you're a KB0, somebody's a W0 or an N0, you know not to transmit, don't do it. I will not transmit when a DX station calls other geographic areas beside mine. So if you hear a person calling CQ East Coast and you're on the West Coast, or CQ West Coast and you're on the East Coast, or suppose you're within the continental US, you hear another US operator calling CQDX. You know right away, don't respond to that call. DX basically means CQ anywhere but America. You'll hear people calling CQ Japan. If you're not in Japan, don't respond. You'll hear people calling CQ France. If you're not in France, don't respond. When a DX operator calls me, I will not repeat my call sign unless I think the DX operator has copied it incorrectly. Don't assume that just because the bands are weak that the DX operator has not copied you correctly. Usually a DX operator will repeat your call sign back to you. They'll say QSL, which means yes, I've received that. Now, if you clearly hear that the call sign they've repeated back is not yours or is a few digits off, then you can go ahead and correct them and repeat it. But you don't want to continuously repeat your call sign assuming they haven't copied it correctly. I will be thankful if and when I do make a contact. This just has to do with courtesy, just common courtesy. There are quite a few people trying to hit the person that you're trying to hit. There can be pileups of maybe, you know, 10, 20, 50, maybe even 100 or more people trying to contact that person in that far off country. We can't go off of this as a sense of entitlement. Hey, I've been a ham for 20 years. Hey, you listen to all these rookies out here. Hey, I'm just gonna key up. Uh, forget about them. I'm gonna be the one that hits this guy. You don't want that attitude at all. In fact, it is an honor to talk to somebody across the globe from you. It's an honor to talk to somebody down the street from you, even if they wanna give you the time of day. But uh, we shouldn't go into this with any kind of sense of entitlement or any kind of sense of expectation even that we are gonna hit this person. At the end of the day, it's just not gonna play out well for you if you have that kind of attitude. And then finally, I'm gonna respect my fellow hams and conduct myself in a way to earn respect. Look at it this way. Somebody's calling CQDX from another country. You're trying to reach them. Okay, treat it like this is their house. Treat it like this is their room. Treat it like this is their business, their foyer, their lobby. Uh, you're a guest in that lobby and you're trying to get through and you're trying to make contact with them. So you wanna earn their mutual respect in doing so. That is the HF Code of Conduct. For more information on HF etiquette, please click the video below. Again, this is Sebastian, KB0TTL and 73.